Let me just say, when my father was near to me, my earthly father, it affected my behavior. Well, there are things that I may not have done and said when my dad was standing right next to me. When your heavenly father is close to you, when you draw near to him, it's going to affect your behavior.
And so I want us to take a look at the message that the prophet of God, Zechariah, brought uh, for, for the Lord to fathers in his day. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what that means for us today. But as you look at chapter 1 in Zechariah, and I'm going to invite you to take a look with me in some, at some verses in chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 2. But as we turn the page and, and open up Zechariah, I'd like to say to you that uh, just by way of context, Zechariah fits with what we've been talking about from uh, the prophet last week in Haggai and the time when exiles have returned from captivity to Jerusalem. And as we talked about over the last few weeks, we talked about how they were, they were allowed to return and in fact in some ways commissioned to return to rebuild the temple of God. And so we're in the time frame uh, to where that there's some overlap. And so the people that Zechariah is, is speaking to uh, would be much the same as those recipients of the message uh, from the prophet last week. And then we look at him as he carries forward that message. So take a look with me now at, at the first chapter of Zechariah, beginning with the second verse. And I want to read just a few verses to you here. It's amazing as I open up the book and look at verse 2. It says, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? So it is, in fact, amazing that as we look to the Word of God on Father's Day and we open up Zechariah, that here, here is a rather dramatic and, and, and I would even say a bit of a biting message from God to fathers. The message that he sends to them is, is verse 3 especially, and I want to focus there, where he says, Return to me, and I will return to you. God says, Return to me, and I will return to you. Clearly, uh, the, the fathers that, that the prophet Zechariah draws attention to, clearly they had drifted away. They had been disobedient. They had not uh, obeyed. They had not listened to God. All that comes out in these verses in the, in the first chapter. Clearly, he's delivering a strong message from God to those fathers. And that message is, return to me. Return to me, God says. And again, uh, much as we talked about previously, the reference to God, the way God is described is the Lord of hosts. A God who is, is sovereign ruler over all. A God who is, is a commander God. A God who is in charge. A God who is over the hosts of heaven. The multitudes over all things. He's the Lord of hosts. And he says, come back. Return to me. And I will return to you. So I want to I pose a couple of questions this morning. Uh, that, that are going to be the focus of the message today. First of all, what does it mean to return to the Lord? What does it mean to return to the Lord? What does it mean? What did it mean for them? And then, and I think clearly in, in, in much the same way, God says the same thing to us. What does it mean for your life today? What does it mean for my life in this day, in this time? What does it mean to return to the Lord? And then what does it mean for the Lord to say, I will return to you? Return to me and I will return to you. What does that mean for us today? What does it mean? First, I want to just make note of something because this is not a, a message from God to, to people who lived way back, 500 years before Christ, approximately in the day of, of Zechariah the prophet. This is not just a message for people who lived and for wayward fathers in the 5th century and 6th century B.C., it is, it is a message that we find resonates throughout the Bible. If, for example, if you want to look at James 4, 8, the 8th verse 
of the fourth chapter of James in the New Testament. What James would say it this way. James says, draw near to me, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. It reads that way, God is saying through James, you know, in that, that first century after, after Christ has come and lived on earth and been crucified and raised from the dead and ascended into heaven, the message is basically the same that God uses through James. He says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Now, let's go forward and in, in, in also in the New Testament to a book called Hebrews. And I want to read a passage from Hebrews. Make a note of Hebrews chapter 7 and the 19th verse. And listen carefully to what Hebrews says. Hebrews says in verse 19 of chapter 7, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope. Now let me just stop right there to say what the writer in Hebrews is saying is, the law could not make perfect, but there is a better way. There, there is a better hope. There is the bringing in of a better hope than the law. And that is, of course, a reference to Jesus. That Jesus is a better way than the law. Jesus is a brighter hope than the law. Jesus is able to do what the law could never accomplish. Now finish verse 19 in Hebrews 7, and it says through which we draw near to God. So what the law could not do, the bringing of a better way, and Jesus is the way, could do. And that is what makes us able to draw near to God through Jesus. We were able to, we're able to draw near to God. So it's a message that is consistent in the Old Testament, consistent in the New Testament, we find a similar message. I've just pointed out a couple of references in, in James 4, 6 and in Hebrews 7, 19 that the same message is there. Draw near to God. Return to God. He will draw near to us. He will return to us. It's the same, same thought. And then the writer of Hebrews makes it clear that we are able now to draw near to God through Jesus in a way that's never been possible before through just the law. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture painted for us. Now, I want to go back for a moment and, and understand some things. Understand why this message, why this strong message, why this, this harsh message came from, from Zechariah to the fathers in Zechariah 1. Why? Understand the why with me for a moment. Why does it matter in, in his day, and why does it matter so much today? It's because, if you go back and read chapter 1, it's because the fathers had not listened. And again, I would say that there is a very similar message in the first part of Hebrews and what you find in, in Zechariah. Hebrews would say, in times past, God spoke in various ways. One of the ways God spoke, if you open up the book of Hebrews and you begin to read, is God spoke through the prophets. And he used the prophets to get his message to his people. And he used men like Zechariah to deliver the message of the Lord to the people. The problem is the message was delivered, but, but people didn't always listen. Can I get an amen from a father that your children don't always listen? All right, can I get an amen from the children to say, but sometimes we do? <laughs> yeah. That was good. See, it, it lets me know they were listening to hear me preach. That's encouraging. They're looking at their U version and not texting on their phones. God bless you. That's nice. So, why? Why was this message so important? Zechariah lays it out very plainly. He says, because your fathers didn't listen. Because they didn't listen. The prophets were speaking, but they didn't listen. And, and they didn't obey. 
and they didn't follow what the Lord was trying to say. So he's, he's really getting their attention, and he's getting our attention to, today to say the same thing. It's about returning to God. Now, I wanted to go through and, and talk a little bit about what does it mean to return to God? What does it mean to draw near to God? Because here we are in, in, in this moment in life, at this time, so what does the Lord say to us? If he's continuing to say, I want you to draw near to me, I want, you to, I want you to return to me. What does that mean for me today? I want to say just a few things that I believe it means out of the Word of God here. I believe the first thing that it means is indeed, it means to listen. I'm catching a little grief at home right now because apparently my hearing is not as good as it used to be. I say apparently, allegedly. I'm going to hang on that word allegedly for a little while. Allegedly, my hearing is not as good, Matt, as it used to be. That's what they say. So what you will discover is there are times, there are moments that I lean in a little bit. And I get a little closer. (laughs) You can stop laughing, Lynn, Nick, anytime. It's not that funny. I believe a part of what God's saying is this. Return to me, draw near to me, so that you can hear what I'm saying. Give me your attention. Give me your ear. Care enough about what I'm saying. I believe God's still speaking to us. He speaks through his word. He speaks through his spirit. He speaks through his people. Sometimes God speaks through people who aren't his people. Sometimes, as I shared with the preschoolers a couple of weeks ago, God can speak through a donkey. Another great moment in preschool is when I told them about the ravens feeding Elijah. And I asked them the next week, who fed Elijah? And they said, the raisins. I said, yes. Yes, you think they don't pay attention. They do. The raisins, they swooped in and they fed Elijah. I believe God is still speaking to us. I believe God still wants to speak into our life. He still wants to say things to us that matter. He still wants to help us and guide us. But sometimes what we need to do is draw near and lean in. Because I will tell you that I believe the same thing that's happening in me physically happens to us spiritually. Perhaps we don't hear as well as we used to. Perhaps we don't hear Perhaps our our hearing is not as keen as it used to be when it comes to God speaking into our lives and leading us and guiding. And we need to lean in a little bit. So I think that's one thing it means. Another thing that I believe it means is, is to be influenced, to be shaped, to be affected. When we are near someone, we are affected by them. I mean, as, as, as a parent, as a father, that's a message that I've preached all of Nick's life is be careful who you hang out with. Be careful how you're influenced. Be careful being influenced. Don't be influenced by people who are a bad influence in your life. They're going to rub off on you. You're going to be affected. You're going to be changed. Well, let's just take that for a moment and say, how are we affected when we get real close to God? God wants us to return to him and draw near to him so that he can rub off on us. So that his heart can shape and mold our heart so that what God loves, we begin to love, so that what God hates, we begin to hate, so that we are shaped and changed and transformed, so that we become like Him. The psalmist would say those that make idols, those who make them become like them because you get close to the stuff. Now the same thing happens when you draw near to God. You are affected by God. You, you, you return to God and draw near to Him, you're going to be affected. The other thing I would say is, is that it helps, us, it helps us stay on the right path. Let me just say, when my father was near to me, my earthly father, it affected my behavior. Well, there are things that I may not have done and said when my dad was standing right next to me. When your heavenly Father is close to you, when you draw near to Him, it's going to affect your behavior. It's going to affect, it's going to help you not stray. I remember it well, though it was 36 years ago. 
That's right. And I climbed out of that playpen. And I got in the car with my brother. And if you're familiar at all with North Knoxville, there's a Merchant's Drive exit now. Well, it didn't always look like it looks now. But there was a brief window where two lanes went to one. You know what that means. That means you patiently let everyone else go first. Don't you? <laughs> so my brother had a... This is before I had my license. And my brother had a, an old Dodge Ram Charger that was the technical term. It was souped up a little bit, Keith. It was souped. And when he got in it, you could hear it. I mean, it... And he loved to make that sound. I will never do that again. So I remember going down right there where the El Chico still is. That two lanes is going to one. And there was a sitting duck four-door sedan that was just ahead of him. And he said those famous last words, watch this. <laughs> and he blew by that. He, he had to have been doing 75 miles an hour by the time we got to the Waggles. And we were going home. And we pulled in the driveway at home. He didn't know my dad was in that sedan. <laughs> now, my dad is, he's an economist when it comes to words. He believes in using the fewest number of words necessary to communicate. Therefore, when that same car pulled in the driveway behind it. Someone else was driving it. Dad got out of the passenger side. He walked up to my brother. First, he used sign language. <laughs> Second, he simply said, give me the keys. That's all he said. Got back in the sedan with my brother's keys, which were, of course, his keys now. And they drove off. There was really no other sentence pronounced at that moment other than, give me the keys. And I remember standing in the driveway with my brother and saying, you know, thank God, I just learned a wonderful life lesson. <laughs> Hence, I am the great driver that I am. <laughs> it's called learning vicariously. The truth is, the truth is, would my brother have done that had he known my dad was in the car? No, of course not. And if we draw near to God, if we, if we return to God, if we draw near to God, if we are listening to God, if we want to be close to God, if we want our heart to be affected by, by God's presence, our mind to be affected by God's presence, our behavior, we will, we will be less likely to wander off. We will be less likely to stray if we're staying close to God, if we're being near to God. I believe that. Now, I want to say this. As you, as you go through Zechariah, as you go through this book, one of the things you'll notice is, although Zechariah does treat ethical concerns and and he treats the ways that, that they were disobeying and violating the law and the commandments of God. But Zechariah's message is not simply a message of, of do this and don't do that. Zechariah aims for the heart. And here's where I want to focus a little bit for dads today. Because I think as men, we love to be about what we do we're a little more comfortable with fixing what's wrong through our actions rather than looking a little bit more on the inside. And clearly, Zechariah the prophet is saying, yes, pay attention to what you do, but take a good look at who you are. Because underneath it all, Zechariah is saying, first of all, let's understand it's a heart issue. Let's understand it's a heart issue. It's not just your behaviors. It's not just 
what you're doing or what you're not doing. Let's take a look at the heart. When I think about what does it mean to return to God, I have to start with the heart. I have to start with a heart, with a heart that wants to know God, with a heart that wants to be near to God, with a heart that wants to connect with God. It is, it is there that we begin. Yes, how we behave is important, and I, and I haven't glossed over that. But as men, sometimes we don't want to pay attention to the heart. We, we look forward in, in, in Zechariah 2. I want to just lift one verse up out of, verse, of chapter 2, verse 8. And, and, and God's speaking about his people, and he refers to his people as the apple of his eye. Isn't that beautiful? God says, God says, whoever touches my people touches the apple of my eye. That's a great picture. That's a great picture of God and his view, his love for his people, and the way God's heart is connected to his people. And I want to take a moment. I want to take a moment just to read Psalm 17 before I wrap up this message. Because I want, to, I want to encourage you, not just to think in terms of returning to God as having to traverse a, a physical distance or, or, or necessarily in terms of what do I do to fix this today. I've wandered away from God. I've strayed. How do, what do I need to do to fix this? I want you to take a moment and look, in, look inside your heart. I want you to consider your heart. Psalm 17 helps us to do that. It happens to be, and one of the reasons I love to focus on this psalm today, it happens to be another reference to the fact that God views his people as the apple of his eye. And that's a phrase that we, we throw out sometimes on, on Father's Day or special occasions. And, and you think about a, a mom looking at her children, or a dad looking at their children, and, and he says he's the apple of her eye, he's the apple of his eye. It's a, it's a term of endearment. It's a term of devotion. It's a term of love and pride. And so let's listen to Psalm 17. I want to read just a few verses. I've just selected a few verses here, beginning of verse 6, and I'll read through 9, and then I'll skip down to verse 15. But listen to what it says. It's a prayer of David. And it's, it's all about the nearness of God. Listen, he says, I've called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Listen to how David describes through physical terms the nearness of God. He says, incline, incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness. Listen. He says, show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. David, poetically, in this prayer, is using physical terms to describe the nearness of God. Incline your ear to me, God. I know you will hear me. Reach out with your right hand. Put your arm around me, God. Right hand is, is, a, is a symbol of God's authority and his power and his strength. But in the Psalms also there are references that let us know it's a symbol of God's nearness and His intervention on our behalf and proximity. O oh, you, O oh God, who save those who trust in you from those who rise up against them.